What is going on at Sevilla? The Spanish juggernauts are entrenched in the relegation battle. At the time of recording, they sit just five points clear. And with a matchup coming up against winless Almeria, if they lose this game, there is a serious chance of them going down. I mean, you look at their roster, they should not be in this position. They've got legends like Sergio Ramos, Jesus Navas. They've got players in their prime, like their Moroccan striker, Inezri. And they've got a nice, decent young core as well. It's clear they need a switch up. Mr. Rebuild is here. We are getting Sevilla out of this relegation dogfight and to the best team in Spanish and European football. I mean, this is the default side. This team on paper should not be in the relegation battle. I know it's only FIFA. I know it's only EAFC, but this team is way too good to be in the position they are. Let's get in there. Let's rip some things apart and get Sevilla back. There are certain areas in the squad where we have decently rated players, but they're just a little too old for the goals that I have. I want to get players that are a similar overall in those positions, but are much younger. Pedro Nato is our first signing here at Sevilla, bringing him across from Wolves. And we're actually going to spend the next two weeks converting him to a left winger. And that's because you look at all of the right wing options that we do have in this side here. My plan, at least for the next year or two, is to give Luca Bacchio, the Belgian winger, the starting right wing spot and cash in on so many of the decently rated right wingers we already have. Once again, Again, I'm going to reference an old rule we had a few years ago in the rebuilds, but don't get butt hurt if I sell your favorite player. Let the clean out begin, ladies and gentlemen. Cashing in big time here. Jordan is heading to Newcastle United. We get a pretty respectable 22 million pounds for him. And we're also selling our Serbian defender Nemanja Gudel to Real Sociedad. In regards to the back line for this first season, I want Ramos and I want Loic Bade to be the two starting center backs this year. A good balance of experience and youth. And I really want to make the most of this season because we're probably going to have to upgrade the left back and the right back role next year. A lot of the back line next year. Acuna and Jesus Navas, I'm planning on keeping as our starting left back and right back for season one, which is why I'm going to upgrade a lot of the squad so we can focus solely on the back line next year. But it continues, lads. Eric Lemaire is the next man out. He is heading to Lazio. But I'm also trying to harness the young core, the young talents we have in this squad, which is why Manu Bueno is heading to Alaves for the year. And we get our star attacking midfielder. I'm excited about this one, lads. The Polish attacking midfielder, Sebastian Szymanski, is joining us from Fenerbahce. 30 million pounds. This kid could be anything. He could be anything anything. And our biggest departure yet has gone through. A well-known name, Suso, going back to the Italian league. He played for AC Milan back in the day, didn't he? Anyways, he's off to Roma. 23 million for him. The money just keeps rolling in. We're probably going to be able to make more business happen this year than I expected because we're going to get 18 million pounds for the Brazilian defender Marcel. He's bloody forcing Athletic Bilbao to break their Basque transfer policy. But while we forget about that for the moment, Juan Lu Sanchez is off on loan. It's not the biggest position change in the world, but we can finally turn Nato into a left winger. Let's get those skill moves up now. Another one. In the words of DJ Khaled, another one. Lucas Acampos is now the second Argentinian right winger to join Fiorentina. I mean, we've got 72 million pounds and we've already signed the two big positions I wanted. That is a good position to be in. But the good times keep rolling. A two-year loan move here for Idumbo. And with one eye on the future, we're going to sign Victor Gomez. He could potentially be a replacement to Jesus Navas next year. 75 overall, Spanish right back playing at Braga. We're going to pay 12 million pounds for him. We're going to sign him and immediately try to get him a loan move, which we have done successfully and in pretty quick time as well. But Victor Gomez is off to Bilbao on a two-year loan move. I am willing, though, to call him back next year, dependent on circumstances. This should just highlight just how much of a downward slope and how shocking it is to see Sevilla in the position they are in real life. They started the season playing the Super Cup after winning the Europa League last year. Let's see if we can get our first trophy though as manager of Sevilla. A game here against Manchester City. My hopes are not high and that they weren't for a reason. We lose the way for Super Cup. But that is the opening window in the books, ladies and gentlemen. This is going to be a really interesting season. I've kept a lot a lot of money, about 60 million pounds in the back pocket because we might make some moves in January. The midfielders really need to get off to a strong start. Same with Luka Baki. I'm not afraid to get an upgrade at the right wing role. Super curious to see how this year starts. 
Don't forget though, we are in the Champions League. It is a really tough group. Group B with Arsenal, PSV and RC Lens. But a one season rebuild is on the cards. So let's not turn our hopes fully off right now. That ain't good, lads. That ain't good at all. I knew we were in the group of death, but my God, we have come last in it. I was hoping we could at least get pushed back to the Europa League playoffs, but it is what it is. We have to now focus solely on La Liga. And that's probably for the best. We are in an undesirable position in La Liga right now now 11. Those eight draws are absolutely killing us. So I'm about to spend a lot of money here in January, making some big additions to the side that could hopefully push us up. I mean, we're only five points out of sixth place. So hopefully get us some sort of European football next year. First thing we're doing is we're getting a big upgrade in between the sticks. It is the Spanish goalkeeper, Alvaro Valles, joining us here from Las Palmas for 28 and a half million pounds. That's a plus four upgrade in between the sticks. What do you think about that one, Lucho? Is that a good signing but the position we want to make the biggest change to is the center midfield role Oliver Torres is gone we're gonna send him to Tottenham for 17 million pounds and we've bagged our replacement it's more of an upgrade if anything it is Rodrigo Benton Kerr coming the other way it would have just been easier if we did a straight swap but the Uruguayan midfielder is joining us from Tottenham I can live with that lads I can live with that just five draws in the whole second half of the La Liga season why did I say the La Liga La is is literally in La Liga for the second half of the season. And we finish seventh, so maybe a conference league spot. But from where we were on January 1st, I'm happy with that. Barcelona do win the league. And as we scroll down, it is going to be Celta Vigo, Alaves, and Granada going down. Atletico Madrid win Copa de España. Unfortunately, we went out in the semifinals. Man City go back to back in the Champions League. PSG stop Betis from being another Spanish side from winning. And Hearts are going to win the Conference League. Bit of a topsy-turvy season for the squad, but one thing was extremely consistent, and that is Yusuf Nezri, the Moroccan striker. Bagging us 28 goals, head and shoulders above the rest of the squad. Really curious though on Gomez. He goes up to a 77, which isn't as much as I wanted. I mean, Navas is going down to a 74. Montiel, we get back. He might honestly be the start at the right back next year. We're going to have a serious decision to make. Going to be losing a few decent backup options here, going back to their parent clubs from their loans. But the biggest one of all is Sergio Ramos retiring at the end of the season. 76 rated. We're going to need a big upgrade here to replace his presence. Nice to see Acuna growing though. I did not expect that. That's season number one done and dusted here at Sevilla. Let's crack on and see if we can get ourselves back into the Champions League picture in season two. We needed a massive replacement and upgrade at the center back role. And we're gonna do just that right here. We've spent a large chunk of our budget on this man, but it is gonna be necessary. Paul Torres, sick of the cold weather in Birmingham. He wants to come back to his homeland of Spain. So we're gonna sign Paul Torres from Aston Villa for 46 and a half million pounds. It might be a little bit of an overpayment, but I don't think we're gonna have to touch this position for the rest of the rebuild. When it comes to end game players, I don't mind overpaying a little bit, but spending the majority of our budget on one player now means we're gonna have to sell some players if we wanna do any more business here in this second season. Adnan Yanazai is gonna fall victim to that. He is off to Roma. And our former starting goalkeeper, Dimitrovic, is also leaving. He's staying in La Liga, though, off to Osasuna. The Swedish left-back, Ludwig Augustinsson, is off to Brentford. And we have just executed what might be the biggest player departure of the season. It is the Swiss send midfielder, Gibril Sal, heading to Sociedad. I spent a lot of time thinking about this one, but I think we need an upgrade at the center midfield as well. And we're gonna get that upgrade. It comes in the fashion of the Dutch center midfielder, Tiani Rudolph, the red-nosed reindeers, joining us here from AC Milan, 33 million pounds. And it's a nice change to see his value actually going up after signing for us. Loan move here though, Juan Luis Sanchez off to Braga for the season. And I've been trying to get a loan move for this guy for the past two years. They kept getting rejected, but we finally get one over the line. It is Nianzu heading to Aston Villa on loan for the season. And now here is the squad. I'm feeling really good about the team we have right now, lads. Need to push for high grounds and go for the Champions League. We need Champions League qualification. Acuna goes up to an 85. This dude is the Benjamin Button of Spanish football. Acuna up to an 85 at what, 32, 33? That is phenomenal. We do have the Conference League to deal with this season. Group D, this is a group we should be topping. We should honestly be going undefeated in this group. I genuinely want us to go for a run. Let's go for a run here in the Conference League and see how we go. But lads, if you are enjoying today, 
today's severe rebuild and you aren't already subscribed, go ahead, Scorpion, kick that subscribe button down below for us. It's not the worst, it's not the greatest. We are still in Champions League contention though. Just need to string these wins together. Sitting fifth in La Liga here on the 1st of January. Barcelona one point ahead of us. Betis four points ahead of us. Real Madrid, both clubs from Madrid are really pushing ahead though. So I think we need to push for top three. Did we make it out of our group though in the Conference League? Surely we did. Surely, yeah, yes we did. And we did it without a loss. Perfect, perfect, perfect. We're gonna go automatically into the round of 16. We're just gonna have to rely on the squad we have now because we've got basically no money in the transfer budget. It's a stark contrast from last year. Had to renew a lot of contracts, signed a lot of players, hired some staff. Let's trust the process and see if we can get ourselves Champions League qualification. Top four on goal difference. Come on, lads. I mean, we had a great goal difference. The goals were flowing in. We finish equal with Real Betis on points, but we are going to be playing Champions League football in season number three. Sevilla are back. Real Madrid have absolutely walked it in here. 13 points clear at the top of La Liga. And as we scroll down, relegated Espanyol, Levante, and Las Palmas all heading down. Atletico Madrid beat Girona. Girona, the surprise packet in real life to win Copa de España. No semi final for us, though, this year. Somewhere we did get a semi final, though, is the Conference League. We go down to Napoli 4 3 on aggregate. We had the advantage as well heading into the second leg. Oh, Napoli did go on to win the Conference League. Man City have won three in a row. Get out of here. And Barcelona have won the Europa League. And Esri is absolutely carrying us. Not as good as last year, but it's good to see the wealth getting shared around here. He's up to an 87, but Nato, Pedro Nato up to it. He gets 18 goals, 13 assists. Even this man here, Luke Ibakio. I mean, I'm probably gonna have to upgrade him next year because he hasn't grown as much as I hoped, but he's had a great year. Szymanski, 12 and 12. It's all around consistency from our top scorers. We're about to lose a lot of players here though to free agency. Mariano is walking. Nylon's already agreed a contract with Rapid VN. Jesus Navas isn't retiring, but didn't want to re-sign for another year, which didn't make sense. But Thomas Delaney, the Danish midfielder, is retiring. Starting off our Champions League season in not the craziest fashion, but with a loan move here for Manu Bueno. One of the big questions going into this season was the right back role. Gonzalo Montiel or Victor Gomez? I'm saying neither. I'm putting Gomez on the transfer list. We're going to cash in on him. I'm going to use Montiel as a backup option, and I'm going in for a big upgrade at the right back role. It didn't pan out the way I wanted it to when I first signed Victor Gomez, but it's okay. We've made about a 21 million pound profit here as we sell the Spaniard to Aston Villa for 33 million. And we bag a massive improvement there at the right back role. I feel like I've done so much business with Tottenham and Aston Villa today, but it's all been worth it in my opinion. Pedro Porro, 25 years of age, 85 overall, joining us here at Sevilla for 54 million pounds. I'm feeling even better about our chance in the Champions League this year. It's our second Champions League campaign, but we are so better equipped this year to go on a run than last. We're gonna get ourselves a huge upgrade at the right wing role. Someone that knows how to win in La Liga and knows how to win in the Champions League. He is gonna bring so much flair to this Sevilla side. It is Rafinha making the move across from Barcelona. We pay 39.1 million pounds for the Brazilian. This team is ridiculous, man. This team is so nice, so balanced. And I'm so excited to see what it can produce here in the Champions League and La Liga this third season. Would love for us to have a crack at every trophy imaginable. I think we can win some trophies and upset quite a few teams. But let's go check out our Champions League group and see if this goal is a little more attainable. All right, we're in group A. I think we can get out of this group. Obviously, you look at it and you think Juve are the top dogs of group A. But between us, Galatasaray, Dinamo, Kiev, why not us? Why won't we be able to get out of this group? It's our second time in the Champions League. Let's see if we can do better than season one where we finished last. Come on, lads. Top of the group on goal difference. That is what you want to see. We tie with Juventus. Same record. Same goal difference, but I think the goals four might have pushed us over the edge to top of the group, but no surprise to see us going through with Juve. More surprising to see us top of the table, and I'm hoping that means we get a good round of 16 matchup. Fiorentina. I can live with that. Out of all the big dogs in the Champions League, Fiorentina is an alright draw to get. Domestically, things are going pretty pretty decent. We've got teams breathing down our necks, but we sit third 
in La Liga right now, hoping we can get closer to the top dogs of Barca and Madrid and not slide down behind Bilbao and Hetafe. In terms of transfer business here in January, I think this is a really good move. We're going to sign a backup goalkeeper here in David Soria. This is a good move, I think, for two reasons. Number one, we get a good backup goalkeeper. We need a good backup goalkeeper in case we get suspensions or injuries heading into the Champions League. And number two, we are going to weaken a side that is breathing down our necks in Getafe for Champions League football. We take their star-studded goalkeeper and I'm hoping they don't replace him. That could really help us out come the end of the season. Champions League time though, fellas. Big one coming up here. Squad isn't as rested as we'd hope getting into this game, but February is kicking our ass. First leg on the road in Italy, heading to Florence, Italy. And we are behind. Oh my God. That is not what we wanted. Beltran gives Fiorentina the lead in the 89th minute. And we have now got to play with our backs against the wall as we go back to Spain in the second leg. What? That's our first loss in the Champions League all season, I believe. Actually, no, we had one loss in the group stages to Juve, but still that hurts. What are we made of here in season number three? One nil down, back at home here. Can we get past this massive deficit not even a massive deficit it's just a massive deficit mentally one nil down against fiorentina at home and we are gonna draw this second leg and we are out in extremely disappointing season here in season three. Our second Champions League campaign with Sevilla sees us go out in the round of 16, 2-1 to Fiorentina. Come on, man. Now the pressure's on tenfold to qualify through La Liga. A little bit of a blow heading into season four as well. Not too big though, because he can be easily replaced. But Pedro Ortiz will be heading to Watford on free. Oh, we might have gone out of the Champions League in shocking fashion, but we almost pulled off one of the great second halves of the season. Real, think about how far ahead Real Madrid and Barcelona were come January 1st. We tied on points with Real Madrid and only lost out on La Liga's title on goal difference. That gives me so much confidence heading into next year. Champions League again in season four. Down the table. Who's going down? Who's going down? It's Sadiz, Almeria, and Ivar. We, oh my, this is a sec, this is a season full of seconds. We lost the final of Copa de España to Barca. It's just nice to see Man City not winning another Champions League. It goes to Leipzig this year. Wolfsburg win the Europa League and the Conference League goes to Spurs. Death, taxes, and Ezri being our top goal scorer. But the most exciting part, he hit the 90s. No, we have a strike that's 90 overall. Zemanski's up to an 86. NATO's up to an 85. Rafinha up to an 86. The lads are looking prime for a run next year. But Pedro Ortiz will be the only player leaving us this year. Let's roll on, lads. We were so close to winning so many trophies here in season three. In season four, we need to take that next step. The time has come, lads. Acuna, I'll give it to him. He has lasted longer than I expected at the left back role, but we need ourselves a superstar. He's slowly decreasing down to an 82 now. Let's go out there, get ourselves a huge left back signing on the open market. There it is, lads. We get our man. There was a few, those three or four names floating about on our short list, but we have gone ahead, pulled the trigger on Theo Hernandez, 28 years of age, in and around his prime right now. 88 overall, absolutely rapid there. A no brainer in comparison. Theo Hernandez, welcome to Sevilla. As far as I'm concerned, I'm pretty happy with our starting 11 right now, but there are a few areas we need to clean up on the reserves. We're going to sign a backup center attacking midfielder. It is Fujimoto, the Japanese attacking midfielder, signing on from FC Lorient. Really looking for bargains this year. That's exactly what we get in Fujimoto. And another great pickup that is going to stretch our budget thin. We don't have much left in the bank account, but we get a backup center midfielder here. Danny Ceballos. He has big game experience. The Spaniard joining us from Real Madrid for 16 million pounds. What a team we have put together, lads. Absolutely salivating at the side right now. You know you're looking good when your lowest rated player is at 85 and still have room to grow. The bench is looking so solid. The reserves are looking solid. We've got 80 rated players sitting in the reserves. Man, I'm feeling good about this year. Let's go see if our Champions League group is going to continue the good vibes. The good vibes 
sides remain in neutral. We've got Tottenham, we've got PSV, we've got Dinamo Kiev. Again, not an easy game here, but if we consider ourselves real contenders, we need to get out of this group. We need to get top of the group as well. Let's go find out and see how we go in season four with Sevilla in three, two, one. What a group. Okay, group F is proving to be full of surprises. We go undefeated in the group stages, top of the group, great stuff. But PSV have eclipsed Spurs on goals scored by one goal, 10 points for the two of them. That is a rough trot for Tottenham. Getting 10 points, three wins, and you can't even get out of your group. Finishing top though hasn't helped us. It hasn't helped PSV come in second either. We're gonna have another trip to Italy, except it's not Fiorentina this year. It's Juventus. Okay, all right. Bayer Leverkusen step aside. We are currently on an undefeated season with Sevilla. Zero losses in the Champions League. And on the 1st of January, zero losses in La Liga. Let's keep those good times moving. So what I've just realized, uh, we're, uh, this is annoying, but both Enesri and Rafinha are suspended for this first leg. So Rafa Mir and Luka Bakio are both back into the starting lineup. Hernandez has by default taken the captain's armband, which I don't necessarily agree with, but but we're gonna come away with the win anyways. Oh, okay. All right. That is good. That is the best case scenario. Rafa Mir and Pedro Neto are gonna give us the lead, but we still have a second leg to hang on. I'm questioning whether we're gonna have a full starting 11 at all during these Champions League knockout rounds. We're gonna get Inezri and Rafinha back, but we're gonna lose Theo Hernandez. Pedroza, who is now higher rated than Acuna, comes in here for a huge matchup. We've got the advantage. This is what we fell out last year. Can we get ourselves to the quarterfinals oh my okay i'm feeling really good no injuries no suspensions and a dominant mammoth three nil win full of confidence and absolutely buzzing after the juventus game but we need to lock in again lads no easy opponents remaining we've got arsenal here in the quarterfinals on the road here for the first leg away at the emirates the big thing though we've got a full strength starting 11 and i'm hoping that's not a curse i'm hoping having a full strength side isn't gonna make us shit the bed but but here we go. It is, it's not going to matter. It is Benton Kerr and Inezri giving us the lead. But is Benton, if Benton Kerr gets suspended, I'm going to be fuming. Well, you just knew that was going to happen, didn't you? All right, lads. Danny Ceballos, our summer signing into the starting 11. We have the 2 1 lead against Arsenal. Can we hold on? Can we get ourselves through to a semi final with this ridiculously good side? The scoreline is a 1 0 win. No suspensions. NATO extends our lead, and we are through to the final four. Come on, lads. It's a season where not much has gone wrong, to be honest. We have been humming, absolutely humming. We're into the Champions League semi finals. It would have been nicer if we were versus Benfica, but instead, we have Inter Milan, our biggest test of the season. Inter are all Always just absolute juggernauts when it comes to career mode. We're back to full strength. Benton Kerr back into the starting 11. What are we made of? At home for the first leg, which isn't a great omen, but it is going to be a one-all draw. So many yellow cards though. It's going to be a miracle if all three of them are playing in the final, or rather this second leg of the semi-final. None of them. None of them are suspended. It's a miracle, I guess. <sighs> This is high stakes, man. High, high stakes. All tied up, heading into the San Siro against one of the best teams in recent history, Inter Milan. We've got a star-studded side, but do we have enough to take Sevilla to a Champions League final? Yes! We do. We come from behind. Lukaku gives into the lead. But our Moroccan magician, Yusuf Nezri, is going to send Sevilla to a European final. The big question, though, are we going to be facing Benfica or Man City? Oh, Man City. That would have been so cool if Ilves versus Benfica. Man City have come from behind and have taken down Benfica, which means we're facing Man City. In our first game, ironically, of the rebuild was the Super Cup against Man City. It may now be our last game of the rebuild. The undefeated season has escaped us by quite a lot here. Five losses, and we dropped down to third. That is a huge disappointment, man. I really wanted to win La Liga this season, not to 
to be though. Champions League, still the main goal. Did any big names get relegated here? It is Villarreal, the yellow submarine, almost getting relegated, but Alaves, Osasuna, and Elche go down. The Super Copa goes to Atletico Madrid. Can't believe that we're about to play for a Champions League title, and we're finally just winning our first piece of silverware, but we won Copa de España this year. Roma win an All-Italian Europa League, and Newcastle take down Girona to win the Conference League. I'm so excited to use Inesri in the Champions League final, but we have to give Pedro Nito his flowers. 24 goals. We were scoring goals for fun this year, lads. Look at three equal golden boot, two in equal golden boot winners, and Szymanski not too far behind them. I am so excited to see how this team plays in game. Let's go. Let's crack on for the Champions League final. A little bit of an advantage for us, some might say. We are in Spain for the final. Makes it easier for our fans to travel. Makes it easier for because we know this side, know this field. Let's see if that actually works out, though. Man City have come out like crazy, and they fire off a warning shot. Man City are here to play, lads. Get that one away. They go at the near post, but it's straight at Valles. Let's relax. Oh, ben, we're running into our own players. They shoot. What a weird animation. God, Haaland, good block there, Theo. Man City's press is killing us, lads. They close us down as soon as we get the ball, but we could use it to our advantage. Free kick here in a dangerous position, lads. Let's see if Rafinha can get a decent attempt here. He hits it. Oh, it's straight into the wall. Oh my God, but the keeper and Rodrigo get mixed up. We get a corner out of it. Come on, Poro. Poro put a good ball in here. Poro, it's... Oh, and Ezri, it's off the post. I don't know what happened in that sequence. It's off the post. Good ball there. Defender in no man's land. Rafinha has the pace. Marquinhos catching up. We have to shoot now. Marquinhos was absolutely rapid there. We need to take something into the change rooms here. Potentially the last play of the first half. It's a decent cross. It's a decent header. Cleared off the line again. Paul Torres feeding it through. Oh my God. Come on, lads. We're really starting to find our own here. Szymanski drilling that one in. Header. Theo puts it wide, and that's going to be the half. Good tackle, Theo, but it falls right back to Rodrigo. Do not lunge in on them. Do not let him get a shot. I've just lunged in, but luckily get a block. Theo Hernandez back on side. He was off there for a minute. We're just going to drive through to the line. Put it in and hope for the best corner. We've had so many corners in this one. We've got it down almost to a fine art. Can we make it work now? Ball in. Punched away. Keeper off the line, though. We get there first. We've actually done quite nicely there. Oh, shit. I've tried to be a hero with the slide tackle. It might have cost us. Jao Cancelo. I've gone sliding in again. Get it away. Get it away. Good stuff. Again. What are we doing defensively? What a smother. Oh, my God. Counterattack now. Not the best ball in the world, but it's a nice tap on there from Inezri. Going under. Go under again. Go. Go. No, why the fuck have I passed that? Feed it down the line. Please, 90th minute. Cancelo's got no stamina. Neither does Szymanski. I see the back post run. I see the back post run. Come on. Rafinha in the 92nd minute is going to win us a Champions League title with Sevilla. Oh, my God. Whoever was marking Rafinha there on that counter-attack is heading straight to the gulag. Number four for City has been outpaced by our rapid Brazilian winger. And that is going to be the difference here in Madrid. We're going to win a Champions League final. Realm. Realm has bottled it there for City. Blow the whistle, referee. There it is. Full time here. We have done it in the most chaotic circumstances. Four seasons down the line, we've taken Sevilla from relegation battlers to a Champions League title. And it is going to be the star of the episode, our elusive goal scorer, and Nezri, who is going to be the man to officially lift the Champions League title and crown Sevilla as champions. What a rebuild. What an ending. Lads, if you enjoyed it, make sure you click here to subscribe and click here to watch another video.